I might end up get, just getting stuck on the eye. I don't know. Uh, So I'm going to sketch it in. <clears throat> Let me use a, a bigger brush here. So you move down to the to the filbert here. And I'm I'm using my blue here. It's a, <clears throat> a mixture like a value five. And I'll I'll build on top of this. You know, like I've mentioned many times. Uh, so that this is like, a, in a way, like an underpainting. This blue will function like a, like an underpainting here so that the warmer, warmer colors can stand out against it. I would like a five, now I'm gonna put a value. This is like a three. Just moving on to a lighter, a lighter value. This is a two. Now I'm going to go back into the into the iris here. 
Sir, there's someone in the waiting room. Okay, I'll let him in. There's two people. Brenda and Jacqueline Rose. You see, there, there's uh, there's I hear my echo. So if you can just mute your computer. Uh, it's really weird. It's almost impossible to talk when you hear your own echo. It's like really disturbing to my mind. Uh, yeah, like I was, uh, how do you do hair? How you, you know, it also depends on uh, who do you want to paint like? You know, who are your, who are your idols? When it comes to painting, uh, I you know the the artist that I gave you to copy the to make the master copies, uh, <clears throat> they're in a way they're more painterly, which means their their work is a little bit more sketchy. Uh, There's uh, and and that's my preference when it comes to to painting. I like uh, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of like you know photorealism. And so I, you know, I like Rembrandt. I like uh, you know Sargent. Like you know the artist that did the painting of Lady Agnew. Uh, so they, you know, they're kind of loose, uh, kind of loose handling of the paint, and so they they simplify. You know, they they do a lot of simplifying in the way that they do every form. I think, and like, and Velasquez, you know, like very seldom will you see in, in a Velasquez painting that he goes in there with a tiny brush and does individual hairs. Uh, so it, like, that's why I mean, like, it depends who you're, who, who you want to paint like. And then there's artists like, uh, like Albert Durer. Do you guys know who that is? No. Okay, I'm gonna, let me no. show you. Professor, uh, yeah. for our portrait, if we have blonde hair, what color do you suggest we use? If you have blonde hair, you can use, uh, <clears throat> get some yellow ochre. Yellow ochre? Yeah. Get some Are we still limited to the three colors? Yes, for okay. now you are. With, with the yellow ochre, you should be able to get some bright yellows. Uh, yeah, because if, if you go in there with cadmium yellow, it'll it'll throw the whole earthy palette out of whack. It'll just not, it won't, you know, kind of won't, it's not gonna look right. Uh, yeah, let me well, let me show you here on the <clears throat> see, like. The way that that's done there, that is painterly. You know, that's, uh, you've had, if I had you for painting one, it's, uh, this is like open form. Open form painting, it means like the, the edges are blurry. So one, one form kind of blurs into the next, it opens up to the next form. And here, like, you know, the, the eye, the, uh, the iris, it's blurry. It opens up to the white of the eye and the white of the eye opens up to the eyelid. And then you just do little highlights and it looks good. You know, that it, it, I prefer this method. And let me open up here, Chrome. <clears throat> Switch the, you know what I'm talking about.
so That's that's kind of like uh, the way this guy painted. You know, uh, this is a, you know, when you get up close to these paintings, they're you know very minimal detail. You see the quality here. Go to Wikipedia. See, you see that? I mean, this, and this is as, as good as you get when it comes to painting portraits. Uh, that's what I like about Wikipedia. They were always asking for money. I should donate at least five dollars. They have, they've got great, uh, they've got great images. You know, very big files that you can download for no, no cost. But see. And of course, when you go to a museum, it's like sometimes they have like, like a little barrier, like, you know, like four or five feet away, so you can't get up close. But look, this is very low detail. But everything is like right in the, it's, it's in the right place. And this is, you know, similar to what Velasquez did. Like uh, when I was doing the demo of the Velasquez, uh, it didn't have eyelashes. Uh, and so it depends, like if you want to paint like him, you might say it's easier. It is and it isn't, it's hard to edit and simplify. Sometimes I think it's easier just to put in all the detail. Uh, then you have uh, Albert Dürer. You know, this guy here. And he's the opposite. He's like meticulous and like obsessive, uh, compulsive with his detail. Okay. Look at this. You can see, like, look at the detail. It's ridiculous. Every, and here you see every strand of hair. You see this? Uh -huh. And look at his, look at his mustache. Look at the fur, like it, it's a tiny little brush. So, it, it, you know, this, uh, and, and also here, they, uh, they're both using oil paint, uh, but, you know, Sargent, he was like in the, Late 1800, like 1880, up to like 1910, 1920. I think he died like in 1920. Of course, Albert Dürer, like in the 1400s. So he was grinding his own paints, and I, and th these guys, uh, in, in in at this time they were using uh, a type of oil paint that is not like what we use today. They would they would mix. Uh, uh, it was oil with a little bit of egg yolk, so it dried faster. And you can clean your brushes with water. It's a, it's what's called an emulsion. Like you mix oil, linseed oil with with the yolk of the egg, and you shake it really fast. And you mix that with your pigments, and it dries it, it dries a lot faster than the oils that we're using. So because it dries faster, you can do more detail. It's kind of like if, you have, if you've ever used liquid. I mean, liquid doesn't have any egg yolk, but it's like a like a faster drying uh, medium that you can use with oil paint. So that, you know, you want to keep in mind like who do you like? And I think with our personalities and your taste, uh, you fall into one or the other category. More close, and this is closed form because you know, you know, look at the iris and the pupil here, very clearly drawn with very identifiable boundaries, you know, the eyelids as well. Everything is clearly described. And then you have, you know, Sargent, which is great. Look how long, com compare the two. Look at that guy. Look at this.
and if uh, and Dürer was a uh, he was also he would do engravings also very small engravings type of print uh, type of printmaking. Uh, so yeah, you know, just keep that in mind. What do you what do you want to go for? So there, you know, quickly I I did the uh, the eye. Uh, and what do I do now? Let me let me go a little bit higher here and do the uh, some of the the eyebrow. How dark it looks against the white. I'll, I'll fix it. I'll... Gotta walk around here. The lights are So now, before I add the red on top of this, uh, I just wanna add some lighter values here. See, on, on top of your, on the eyelid where you have directly over your, over the iris, you're always gonna have a highlight. Cause you know, the, the iris bulges out of the eye, out of the eyeball, so it creates this highlight. Wherever the if, if the eye was looking this way, this highlight would move. And see, this is why I like uh, these brushes, the filberts. They they make uh, they you know in a way they make it easier to. Uh, to edit what you're painting. And I also want to indicate here the, a little bit of a highlight on the tear duct. And then to show the edge here of the, of the eyelid here. And there's a little bit of a highlight there. I can bring more light here also. And this is a, just a lighter value here. To emphasize, you know, the eyeball there. A bit more light.
and then in 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 regards to painting the eye uh so it's like a crystal ball there like a marble so it gets a highlight up here i should save this for last but i can't help it but when i do this it gets a highlight there and then the light filters through it and then you have a little bit of more light on this side I want to blur that out. Nice. And so, see, in a way that it works there, like it has, you know, just like the uh, suggestion of, of the eyelashes, but I'll, I'll go in and, and do the. Uh, I'll add the color to make it look more finished. So I'm gonna go in with, with one of my lightest reds here. Can use that there, maybe here as well. And then slightly darker. Yeah, like I showed you, let me show you again here. I got my pre-mixed values and I'm just going down the line from light to dark on the reds. You see, cause I, I don't wanna disturb the, the previous layers of the gray I'm very, you know, just gently laying down the color here. And you see, you start to see with this kind of close up, you start to see how you get that depth, you know, the, the, the warm against the cool there. I'm going to move, move to another darker value of the red here. Because this, this is pretty dark, this part of the, of the eyelid here. It gets a lot of reflected light.
Yes, I think like I already have a good amount of paint here. I need to move on to a softer brush. I'll use, I'll use one of these here. I just want to define this a little bit more before I go in with the with the round brushes. See, there's a, it, it's a lighter value here. Make it more, has to be lighter even. This is, this becomes the side plane of the of the nose. See how this looks here. There's a <clears throat> Professor Gonzalez, uh Savannah is in the waiting room. Okay. I will go. I, I felt I needed a really a really dark value of, of the red here. And 
And then of course here at the tear duct, it gets pretty red. Oh, I just wanted to put some color there. I'll, I'll go back and put the right one. That looks, should be a little bit brighter. And then here on the crease here. So you see, it's just very, <clears throat> very delicate brushstrokes. I think that that's as much as I can do with this brush. Now I gotta I gotta move on to the small brush. Not the tiny one for the eyelashes, but uh, I guess like the one I started to do the outline first. You know, I think I can use this. <clears throat> It'll allow me to be more, more precise. I was losing this highlight here, so I gotta find it again. <clears throat> And I think that this is turning out to be like uh, life size, maybe a little bit bigger than life size. And also, uh, Just like uh, the amount of detail that you want to put into your work is uh, is your is your preference your preference you know do you want to paint like Sargent or like Albert Durer uh, the same thing with with size and I mean I remember. You know, when I was a lot younger and starting with my drawings and my paintings, I, I always had a sense that I wanted to make things, everything, if I drew an apple, whatever I drew, you know, within reason, of course, uh, I wanted it to be life-size. I just had that like instinct. <clears throat> and so, it, if an artist uh, does big paintings, you know, like life-size portraits and things, you're gonna have to minimize the amount of detail that you put on them. Uh, like, like Sargent's and Velasquez, they, their paintings are a lot bigger than Albert Durer. Usually artists that do a lot of detail, their work is, is uh, smaller. And now, you know, teaching, I, I see some, you know, students, they fall into that, into one or the other category, 
on their own. You know, sometimes there's students that are very good at detail and, 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 but they work small. And then people that are not as detailed, but they work larger. It's just, you know, just like a natural inclination that people have. I want to bring this structure, bring it out more with some brighter values here. I just want to bring more light here into this.
And see here, I've got some of that blue that I want to kind of mix into the red that I'm putting here. Some of that red here on the on the eyeball. And see now it forces me to make this brighter. Okay, so this, I can keep working on this for a long time. It's fun to do all these details. Now, uh, let me see. Now, I've left, you know, this, this is the upper plane of this lower eyelid. It still looks blue, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it lighter and make it warmer. See, I'm, I'm building the eye so that then I can put the eyelashes because those are, that's where they're gonna be. So I gotta, I have to build that structure before I put them in there. See, this, this is why I like this kind of limited palette. See how this is all you need, really. It's kind of like your rice and beans. You know, it's all you need. Eventually rice and beans will kill you because they're just carbs, but. But they're so good. <laughs> yes, they are. One of the biggest tragedies of my life was when I realized that beans are carbs and rice. The lights went off.
Try to put more, more of a lighter value there. And before I, I put the, the eyelashes, they're, they're casting a little bit of a shadow here. That's what I'm, what I'm gonna put first. Now she has a little bit of a, she's got some makeup on there. I, she has some eyeliner and then also the, to make the, the eyelashes look thicker. I want to bring some light here. Now, uh, before I before I go on to do the eyelashes, I want to. I guess I'll use this this chance here to. This has become not just the, how to paint the eyelashes, but how to paint the paint the eye. Look, the eye here just the pupil. I'm gonna darken that here. I'll give it a lot more depth. I want to paint over the, the highlight. I'll, I'll put it back on again. And of course, the the eye, the eyelid here on top it casts a shadow, and that's what you see over here. 
I know he is well. See that? That just gives it a lot more depth. <clears throat> And this, on, on people with very light color eyes, you see this a lot more clearly, this kind of like an outline. Just because I've got yellow ochre here, and I, and because the, the lady here on the on the picture. She has green eyes, kind of like green gray. I'll put some yellow ochre here, make them, a little bit green. But see, I, I started with a big brush, and see how. How uh, smaller I'm the brush guy now that I'm doing this type of work. And sometimes uh, like I've noticed that like with students, the the type of brush they're using makes a big difference. And I'm thinking I probably got to move to even a smaller brush. I'm gonna go into the into the white of the eye here, just to shape the iris.
And there's a little bit more light here. And there's a little bit of a shadow here. Now, just the, uh, <clears throat> I'm not quite done with this part, but see, like I indicated this top plane of, of the lower eyelid and the, the upper eyelid also has an under plane here. If you're looking at the photo that I sent you, you see that it's red, there's red, there's a red uh, color here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and put that in. And just like you've got that highlight right on top of the uh, of the iris, that's where you see more of this underside, underplane here. And it goes all the way over here. See how that? <clears throat> now that, that makes this blue look even more blue right on top here. And I'm going to use some of that right here. That's not going to be the end of it. I just wanted to sharpen, and I just want to sharpen that more. I'm going to cover that up with some part of this with some of this green. Here. And I'm going to move on to the, the smaller brush. I'm fixing to do the eyelashes. So look now this, this is where you want to bring this one in. Something like this. Let me show you the, the progression of brushes that I've used. 
sometimes I, you know, in painting one or even intermediate, I'll see a student start off a painting with a little brush like this. And they come in, you want to keep that in mind, they come in different sizes for different stages and different uh, types of things you want to do with them. So first, I want to put the put the highlight. And I'm gonna mix some of this green here as that light filters through and comes out on this side. And on, on the photo, there's a reflection. It's a really high resolution photo. That's why I, why I picked it. There's a, on the iris here, there's a reflection of the top plane of this eyelid right here. And I'm gonna use this. There's also like a highlight here and here. And I'm gonna use, <clears throat> I put some dark red here cause there's uh, some, some details I wanna put here. Professor. Yes. How long does it usually take you to do an eye? Never enough time. Uh, it depends. It depends uh, how good I want it to look, you know. If you do a larger painting, it does. is it more difficult? Well, no, like, like I said, like if, if, if you're doing life-size paintings, it kind of forces you to minimize on the, on the detail. You know, uh, like I, I, can, I can do a portrait. I can do a portrait, you know, hair, eyes, lips in about, like, uh, let's see if I start painting like at eight o'clock to about like 10 at night. 
like a full day's work, I can do a, I can do a finished portrait. But yeah, there's there's uh, so many little details here that I can keep adding and makes it look makes it look better. Sometimes you mess up, but you know. I should have recorded it with my phone for the time lapse. And see there, you start to see that play of cool and warm, how, how, it, how it should work. Let me see what else I can add before I do the, the finishing touches here. I want to darken this crease here. See here, I'm using a dark red and see how now it, it creates a nice contrast with that blue that I had there, but it, it's all very subtle. And that's how, that's how skin tones work. And that's how you look at the tonality of, of the features on your face. That's, this is pretty much what's happening.
Is Savannah there? Savannah? Yes, I'm here, sir. Okay, you want to pay attention. This is all for you. <laughs> okay, thank, thankfully I'm here now. Yeah, if you hadn't shown up, I'd be really pissed. So sorry, sir. I had a doctor's appointment, but I made it in time. That's all that matters. Just got to show up. But yeah, look, this is uh, how you do the eyelashes. First, you do all this that I've done. You draw the eye. <clears throat> you make the, uh, the eyelids, the iris, the pupil. So you build the area where you're going to, where you're going to add the eyelashes. You get a tiny little brush. Now, uh, <clears throat> What I'm gonna do is uh, get my darkest value here. See how that's gonna look. My darkest value of black or of blue and put a little bit of the darkest value of the red and make it a consistency so that the paint can flow. This is why you need the paint thinner. The paint thinner with the linseed oil. And of course, the, the, the eyelashes grow out of this part right here. Okay, that might be too dark. I'll have to put some, I gotta line it up a little bit. I think that will work better. So they curve. See, like I laid down that first stroke, and it's, I was shocked at how dark it looked. So I, you know, playing it safe, going lighter, and then this. So this, what I'm doing now, can become. The uh, the shadows that are being cast by the by the eyelashes. And I'll add some darker some darker eyelashes in a little bit here. So yeah, it's, it's all very subtle here at this point. Very subtle changes in value here. Let me try this out here on this corner here. This would be a...
very tense moments. See, something like that. <clears throat> I gotta push them back a little bit. And see, the the paint is, uh, it's fresh. You know, I started this, uh, you know, I don't know, an hour ago or more. I kind of lost track of time. So you don't always have to wait for the paint to dry. I. When I started painting, I couldn't wait for my paint to dry. It was so frustrating. But as you get more experience, you start to figure out ways how to move the paint so that it's not doesn't really matter if the if it's still wet. It just it's better to paint when the when it's still it's still it's still wet so you can move it around. But yeah, th th that only comes with with uh, a lot of time spent painting and you know figuring out what what you can do with it, what you can do with paint. So those are the lower, that's the lower eyelid. Now before before I go here, I want to add some of this value here. See, that was that was a blue against the red and it creates a nice uh, contrast and gives the uh, the effect of detail And see, like I had put, I put red, I've got blue and then red, and I'm gonna put more blue here to make the crease look deeper. I think when you start using small brushes like this, you have to be careful that you don't end up drawing your painting. That's one of my, my 
criticisms of artists that work like Galbert Dürer that they look, they don't look painted, they look drawn. That was my, that's my concern here with this line that I don't want it to look drawn. I want to blur it out. I don't think that's good. All right, now I think I can. Do the eyelashes here. You know, they. There's a lot. I think also one of the challenges with doing the eyelashes is that. They are. They're foreshortened because they're coming at you and then they're curving also. So they come out at you from this edge and then they go up. Like I picked up some some of the wet paint there. See, like there, and I gotta clean the brush. See. <clears throat> Like I got I have to do the stroke just once because it has it picks up some of that wipe and I want to bring it back in. No mistake. And then these here that are 
right coming at you, they just go up. See, and I start off at the place where they, they grow. And <clears throat> do the stroke from there. Darken the pace. <clears throat> So you gotta move your hand so that you can do a flowing brush stroke, which is not easy. <clears throat> so <clears throat> something like that that's how that's how you do the eyelashes
That looks amazing. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that took uh, longer than I <laughs> than I expected. How long did it take you to master it? What's that? How long did it take you to master it? I feel like I'm going to take a while to master this technique. Well, I've been painting. I am 47. I've been painting in oils since I was, I, I didn't really get serious with oils. I was like 19, like in around like 1994, 95. <laughs> so long, you probably haven't been alive longer than than that so it takes it does take a lot of time a lot of a lot of with it, it's fine like i wouldn't have kept up kept doing this if i didn't enjoy it but yeah, it takes a while uh, but see there like getting in that close with the camera and just looking over here at the at the at the monitor uh, the screen on the computer here. It also should give you a sense of how to work with these colors, you know, like the, oh, that's the, what I keep talking about, the, the warm against the cool, against the warm. See, creating, creating that effect of, of skin and of the depth of the different layers of skin and of the different layers of, of, the, of the features of the face, you know. And see, there, there's not like when you when you do a painting and you nail it down on the on the first attempt and the paint looks fresh. If you keep work, like if I had let it dry and then gotten over it, I mean, it, it'll look good. But there's something about the paint just being fresh. Like there's nothing like like anything in life, you know, like uh, uh, eating freshly uh, harvested veggies or fruit. You know, there's nothing like you know nothing like that you know when it's when you and, and when it comes to paint like when you don't move it around too much it just looks brighter i, I still got time here uh, we we go on until when you look half an hour all right Okay, let me see if I can do the hair. Let's zoom out here. Go with the camera here.
So I'm going to, right under the eye, I'm just going to do the, do the demo here on, on how to do the hair. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, to you know, like I mentioned, you know, several times, uh, you have to simplify. And and uh, like when I look at like I look at this picture, and when I'm going to do something that is very complicated, like I always uh, got into the habit of squinting. So you squint so that you kind of minimize the amount of details that you're that you're looking at and uh and when you do that you know like the the image uh what happens you know like the light values become lighter the darker values become darker and it just it it becomes more generalized and you can can see the the basic uh you know, structure kind of start to emerge and you can see that better. Uh, so I'm gonna just kind of start here. So I don't want to forget that it's the hair is on is on top of this egg shape. And, you know, th there's a lot of things that are very basic, you know, sometimes we just kind of overlook like, yeah, we know that we have a round egg like, sh you know, shaped head. And uh, I mean, it's obvious, you know, we all have a head, right? Uh, but sometimes when we paint, we just kind of forget. And that if you just kind of remind yourself, okay, that shape is going to have a big impact on how I paint the hair. Uh, that that's going to help. And I look at the photo here, and I'm like, well, she, you know, there's light uh, falling on her. And as I squint, you know, uh, I see that it's like. You know, same thing like I talked about in painting one, you've got the, it does that. So, you know, get away from like, oh, I see hair and my hair is always like, it's always, you know, it's gonna be like this cause she's got curly hair or just, if you start doing that, you don't end up with hair, you end up with uh, squiggly lines, you know? And it, it, it makes hair makes, it's like a structure, you know, like a helmet on top of a head. See, so that, I'm gonna approach it that way. And yeah, she has a lot of curls. I wanna simplify it here. Like I see it's like, <clears throat> and as it falls, I think it makes this kind of, uh, kind of like a box kind of shape here. It does that. Let me lower the camera and you can see what I'm doing. 
Looking like some Egyptian uh, statue or something. See, it has that. That's kind of what I see on on the on the photo here. Let me show you the photo. You know, I see that looks like the front plane, and that looks like side plane. When I squint, this looks very bright, and this looks very dark. And I'll have something similar on this side. So there I have like a sphere on half a sphere on top and then two rectangular prisms on the side here to, you know just to get me started of course it's it's uh well do this and it seems like it does that also When is I, as I keep looking here, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Uh, maybe there's, I see this. So I'm, I can approach it like that, You're, you know, like, you know, I've got this fear because you know, in this area, it's more visible, more clearly visible than on, on these sides because then the way that the long hair kind of cascades down, it on this area becomes like a rectangular prism, the basic shape. Uh, and then also another thing I'll, I, I'm avoiding, you know, uh, thinking of the hair like I mentioned, like of doing this, and or if there, if the model had straight hair, because that's that's not going to help you at all. And if it does, it'll be towards the very end. So uh, then I, I look and I'm like, I can, I can. Uh, I see that there's uh, big shapes. There's like this big shape. And then there's this other big shape. Because the hair naturally does this. It does it. It forms. these masses <clears throat> so that's how I'm going to separate it I'm just you know those are the basic shapes I see on top of that you know sphere like egg like form and then what you know 
this is to get the effect of the light. Now this is lighter, this is darker. But then I, I, I'm like, how can I simplify this even more? Uh, so what do the curls look like? Well, look, you know, if you, they look like curls, you know, I remember my mom when she would curl her hair and my, you know, friends or wife, you know, like they use curlers, right? So that's going to help me also paint them, you know? Think of those, this is why like, you know, geometry, geometric forms are so kind of important here. And I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm waiting for, we already ordered the casts, some of the, some of the sculpture casts. I don't know if I told you guys, uh, you know, they're based on some Greek and some Roman uh, statues. Uh, and I ordered some, you know, some bust, you know, like the head with the shoulders and then, you know, other body parts, you know, not, they're not going to be life-size, but they should be good to use in, in class. And the main reason I wanted those portrait busts, because you see the way that the sculptors do hair. It's all, a sculptor doesn't do this kind of, when they're carving, they don't do this. First, what you notice on those sculptures, you see these big shapes. And I'm hoping that we, when we get them, we can, it'll make it easier like to demonstrate this. And so that, because I, I mean, I get this questions a lot in class. Like, how do you paint hair? How do you draw hair? And you have, you've got to, you have to think of these basic forms. And you see them very clearly on those uh, statues from antiquity. And see, she looks kind of cartoonish at this stage, but you'll see, you'll see what's gonna happen. Then this becomes like a, there's a big, I keep squinting to figure out where these cylinders are gonna be. And then there's like another one here. And, you know, when, if I was painting this and I had a limited amount of time because the person was posing for me and I was paying the model or, you know, the university was paying the model, of course, I wouldn't do this. But I, in, in my mind, I, I try and figure this out. This is like what you don't see when an artist is working, you know, that like how, how are they able to do this? How are they able to get more detail? Well, you kind of have to do this on in your mind, you know. <clears throat> and then I'm just just so that I don't forget her face here like this. And see, like on the photo, like she and she has got a lot of hair. Very, you know, I like the picture. You know, like very massive, cascading curls. And that's what I'm, I think at this stage, these solid masses that I've kind of uh, suggested. I mean, they look heavy on her. And so now I got to make them. Now they're too heavy. You know, now they're too general. So slowly, I got to work them into into the basic shapes, into the, into the, not basic shapes, but like, you know, the strands and things like that. Uh, so I'm gonna, I've got the forms, now I'm gonna think of, you know, light and shadow. 
So it's break, you know, it's breaking it up into into just into these more simple components, you know, basic forms. Then from there, you know, those basic three dimensional forms. Then what's next? Well, then what else is basic? Well, light and shadow. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Let me get a bigger brush here. And the whole thing I try and kind of drive across in, in class, in the class I teach is just wait for the details, you know, wait on doing the highlight on the eye and the eyelashes. When you do those things, of course, it makes the painting, whatever you're doing makes it look, you know, when you add those details, it makes it look nice. But the thing is, you got to wait on those. You got to build up, build it up for those finishing touches. And the same thing with the, with the hair. So she's, she's kind of like auburn here. I'm gonna use my, my reds and my blues here. So this basic shape here, I see some shadow right here. And then I see on this one. And then on this one further back, it's a little darker. And maybe also on this here. So see, that's black, and I mean, this is still dark, but because this is, you know, further back, it, it gets less light. And And just because of the the logic of how light falls, I'm thinking this should be brighter than these. But maybe this one, this that shadow should maybe be darker than this initial one. So maybe maybe this here should kind of match these here. And see, like this is also like if you, of course, everybody's eaten grapefruit or you know oranges that's kind of like how i'm thinking about this also and then the same thing for the cylinders on this side there they are they're gonna be darker, you know, there's shadow here. Maybe darker. And then way darker on these on these here. You see my darkest values here. And here there's a lot of shadow also. I 
Now maybe you're not as dark. Looks like a spider right now. You know, you see the legs and the <clears throat> and the body up here. So now, you know, I've, I've got lights and I've got lights and shadows. So now I gotta, you know, go in the in beat like the go into the light. I've got most of the values in the shadows. Now I gotta go into the light here. So I'm gonna, you know, just work on my. In my red, you know, go into the different values of the red that I have. And so now this value comes up. And here. And this might work as a highlight in the back. See that, and then here. You see, the way that I'm going about it, though, is, is following like these areas of value that I first established when I was determining that this was like a sphere or like an egg shape. And then I move on to the to another lighter value of the red with some some of the yellow. Sometimes I gotta go back because I think this here is darker. <clears throat> so that's the top section. I'm gonna do this to the sides. So again, working from the darkest values to the light. You see, now I'm, I'm going across the form like when I paint the cylinders so that it, it has that, that volume. Now I can move on to the to the next value here.
remember with you know long forms you kind of go across the form and do this you got to... i'll go back and put the lighter one here because of you know, there's a lot of interplay of, you know, these values here, but I can go back at the, the lighter ones. Now this here, See, so it's starting to look more natural, more, more like here. Okay, we're almost, I think I can finish this. We have a... <clears throat> we have a few more minutes now. <clears throat> Don't get don't get crazy with the fan brush. I'm just kind of dab this so that it blends here. I don't want to lose this the form. <clears throat> and see now now i can do some some detail work some uh, go back to my small brush <clears throat> See, now I can start doing some things like this here. And see, when I do the stroke, it's like I'm wrapping it around a cylinder.
<clears throat> so when you look at at this lady with this hair, you know, of course, it looks very pretty. But also kind of there's like a chaos to the amount of hair. And uh, so I, what I've tried to do is just kind of bring some, the way that I've painted it, bring some kind of order to it, you know, following, you know, my understanding of structure, of geometric forms, you know, light and shadow. But you see how it looks there? Like it's, I mean, I keep doing this and it has a lot of volume to it. And a lot of, a lot of form. <clears throat> see, I'm, I'm gonna, Smooth it out with the fan brush. It's quite very, you know, you saw how fast I did it. You have to be careful with the with the fan brush. Like I'm just like barely like grazing it. Uh, because if you and if you do this like too much like this. Then you'd lose the whole form. Uh, <clears throat> I can go back here and, and uh, just for some more depth here, like <clears throat> well, I think I think that does that help? Does that is, you think that that'll help you guys with the uh, hair? I keep doing that and just getting a smaller brush. I think that helped. Yeah, I kind of understand your technique, sort of. <laughs> yeah, you see, like it, it's all just uh, very, uh, very basic forms, and then slowly getting more and more detail. And it, like I mentioned, you know, it depends what your ultimate uh, goal is that you want to, you want to paint like uh, Sargent or Velasquez, they would have left it something like this. You want to be like Durer, you'd get a smaller brush and, you know, keep, but even Durer, <clears throat> if you look at some of his drawings, it's all about emphasizing the basic geometric forms when you start. And see, like, it, like, I think it looks heavy, the, the way that I painted it, like, it looks like it's, there's something under the hair, and there's, like, it has line, shadow, has structure, and then you can add the details, but this, this is the way that you want to, you want to go about it. 
<clears throat> so what else? I don't have time to do the guy, but 